Hey guys, welcome to the shop. Now I've got two things that I want to do today. I want to test run the spindle on the grinder. Now I've already rewired it and I need a small taste of success. And I want to start on making an arbor for balancing my grinding wheels. So let's go in the shop and get started. Alright, so I haven't run this thing at all. I don't know what the motor sounds like and I don't know what the spindle sounds like and to be honest I really want to know before I get too much further into this thing. I got a lot of work to do on the saddle and a lot of decisions to make on the best way to do it and how to do it. But I want to know if the spindle sounds good. I want to know if the motor sounds good. I want to know if the switch operates the way it should and I can get forward and reverse and all that stuff. I mean that's essential to, to running this thing. So while I've got parts out for repair or, you know, in my meantime while I'm doing other repairs, I want to know what else I need to address. So I rewired it. I got uh, some pretty decent wire. It's actually new wire. It's a little big for this setup, but for now it's going to work just fine. So I'm going to go plug in my phase converter. Now this is the phase converter that I run my milling machine on. and. It's a little noisy, just like any phase converter I've ever seen, and it, I don't know what it is about phase converters, but they drive you nuts, and uh, this little one's no different. So I'm going to go plug this thing in. We'll first test run the motor and see how it sounds, because by hand, it sounds a little rough to me. And then we'll test run the spindle. We'll put a belt on it and uh, see how it sounds. But it feels good, so... Let's plug in the space converter and start this thing up. So, alright, the space converter's on and there's nothing left to do but flip this switch. Now, I wired this thing exactly like it was wired when I rewired it. So, hopefully everything works, but, uh, but we'll see. We'll try reverse first. It runs and actually doesn't sound too bad. It's not near as noisy as I assumed it would be. I mean, that's that's a good feeling right there, just to just to run it, as I haven't. Let's try it in the other direction. This would be forward, and it fires right up. It gets up to speed quick, and it almost vibrates none at all. It's, that's surprising. And, pr and promising, so that, that's good. That's a good thing. Let's uh, let's put a belt on this thing and run the spindle. All right, let's run this spindle for the first time. Feels pretty good. Uh, I'm happy about that. Actually, I can't hardly tell the difference in the noise from just the motor uh, alone versus motor and spindle. So that's a good thing. Not feeling much vibration, although I can feel it a little. I think some of it's this belt, so I may have to play with belt tension if I see this in the grinding. Which I have no idea, but uh, you know, I know you don't want vibration uh, in your setup. So that's awesome. Very nice. Man, that's that's nice, nice and smooth. That's what I was hoping for. Man, that's uh, I'm happy about that. I needed a uh, little success on this thing. Something that works the way it should. You know. Not that many things haven't. I'm actually pretty pleased with the uh, with the outcome of this machine so far. It could have really been a lot worse than it than it is. So, being a grinder, they're notorious for eating themselves. So, most of the surfaces on this look pretty good. So, a little work to do, but. Uh, 
but I think uh, I think after we get done, we'll have a really nice machine. I think. Well, I couldn't help myself. Uh, this is maybe a little premature. Actually, it's probably a lot premature. But I stuck a grinding wheel on here. Now, this is a really thin wheel because I don't have a balancer. You know, this is going to be mixed results. But I want to dress this wheel. I want to test its surface finish on a piece of 4140. I'm just going to dust a corner of this thing. I'm not going to try to grind anything uh, uh, because I don't have any good dust collection system yet. I don't have a dust collection system at all yet. So I'm just going to dress this wheel. I'm going to kiss this surface. I just want to see for my own mental well-being what kind of finish I can get on this. So first we're going to dress it. This is a little, I don't know what this is actually, but it's got a diamond nib on it. And I want to dress this wheel up. So I'm just going to, by the hand, bring this down. You try to get directly under the center of the wheel. Bring this down. I did ring this wheel like it showed in a lot of videos for testing for cracks and stuff. I did all that. The only thing I haven't done is balance it. And that could drastically affect our finish also. I'm just listening for a good smooth sound. We're about there. You're going to get to see the first sparks along with me, so I think that's pretty good. I'm excited about it, but even as simple as something like this is. Look at that. And we're just barely touching it. Chloe, the collie, and my son are chasing each other. So I'm hearing a little unevenness, like a little chattering of that wheel. And I don't know, it may not have dressed it enough. Or it could be an imbalance. But, like I said, you know, I, I, I have no idea find out. Alright, that's enough. We're making a big mess and we don't have any great way to collect the dust. So, let's look at this finish and see what it looks like. Man, uh, this is definitely a messy thing and you would have to have some sort of good dust collection because this would get all in the air and all up in your lungs and stuff. Oh, it looks pretty good. Let's see. I mean, it's not perfect, a little, little bit of whoop de doos but I mean, about as good as anything I see, to be honest. Ah, man, that, that takes a little weight off my shoulders. That looks so nice. Very good. Let's go make an arbor so we can use this thing properly. All right, now I've had a few viewers reach out to me with the, uh, you know, where to get manuals, and then I had uh, one of my viewers, uh, he's also a follower on my Instagram, uh, sent me this manual, which I really appreciated. It was John. So, this is a not necessarily a manual, it's more of a brochure on several different models. Uh, not the model that I have necessarily, but it 
all these take basically the same attachments. And there's several attachments, or at least a couple, that I know of that I don't have that would be super handy. And let's see. Yeah, here on the back is a quick way to, to find them. One is this uh, B989 Universal Work Holding Fixture. And I don't have one of these. Oh, well, actually, I do have one of these. I have one for a number two Cincinnati machine, which is way too big for this little machine I've got. So I need one of these, which is a B989 Universal Work Holding Fixture, and that would allow us to clamp up. It's just a swiveling vise. It would allow us to clamp up uh, tool bits and stuff to sharpen for the lathe and shaper. And another thing that I would really like to find is this right here, which is a hand fixture for... Here's another picture, I guess, of uh, the different one. Uh, this one has uh, X and Y axis uh, movements built in and rotates. This is just... Uh, rotates this way and this way which would be just fine for me. But you can put indexing plates on these to index your flutes, like if you were going to sharpen the end of an end mill or, or blades, teeth on a circular saw blade. So I need one of those. I want one of those. And I want one of these. I don't know about need, but want. And you can also put a small vise in these, which is neat, like small four jaw, small three jaw. I really think that would be uh, really handy, and I'm seeing a lot of things that I that I really don't have, but uh, don't necessarily need, but would like to have. This one here has an indexing an indexing ring on uh, on the end of it, and the finger just comes down, and you can click it and rotate it to get your uh, accurate uh, indexing. Two tail stocks. Now I only have one tail stock. I do have the motorized head. Uh, that could act as one tailstock, but just one fixed tailstock is all I have. And this just goes over several different, you know, grindings and or grinders and heads and components that they come with, I guess. This is the universal grinding head, similar to the one that I have. So a really neat little book. And it's got a lot of neat stuff in it. It's a lot of stuff that I wasn't aware of that was even available. But it looks like for a machine like that little universal grinder that you can, you know, it's your imagination is the, is the only limit to what you can do and the fixtures that you can put on it. Extended tail stocks, face plates. Um, it's a, uh, here's a speed controller. So if you wanted to control the speed of your head, other than just changing the belts, you can actually get a fine control. This is the one that I have, just the B943 uh, motor-driven work head, and I actually, you know, we've seen it. Uh, if you've watched the earlier videos, I have uh, this dog drive attachment and the 5C collet attachment for this. So it's saying that total run out is two tenths. So that's pretty good. That's uh, that's not much run out. Yeah, or less at the spindle nose. Uh, half a thousandth less test for arbor, six inches from spindle nose. Wow, that's extremely accurate. So here's a setup showing, uh, I don't know if you can see that well, showing ID grinding. They got a little arbor in the spindle nose running inside of a some sort of hole in the uh, motor driven work head so they're accurately sizing a bore. Here's a picture, although small, of them doing cylindrical grinding. Uh, grinding the outside of a shaft, one tail stock, motor driven work head with a dog, and uh, grinding wheel running back and forth. That's pretty neat. So you name it, they're grinding centers just everything so you name it you can do it and I think it'll be uh, pretty neat when we get everything together here's a little better look at that uh, that surface finish not too bad see the LED lights uh, in the reflection so pretty happy with that let's go 
look at the arbor that we need to build. All right, so I need to make an arbor to balance my wheels on, and this is just the first step of it. And I'm not 100% for certain this will work, but I, but I think it will. And here's our existing arbor, the one that goes in the spindle of our cutter grinder. We have a taper that matches the arbors for the wheels. We have a thread that the nut that holds the um, actual arbor onto the taper. And what we want is basically this without this big washer. I don't really need this this washer on here um, with two shanks on the ends. And I want to do this between centers. I think that'll probably be the most accurate way. It'll allow me to take it in and out of the lathe and you know put it back in with relative you know, accuracy. So I made a quick drawing. This is just for, for me, really. Um, it just has all the dimensions, so I don't have to remember them. I pretty much know them, but this will allow me to, uh, to you know, not make any stupid mistakes. So we're going to be using the taper attachment also. I've got the taper attachment already set, and the way that I set it was I just chucked this up in the lathe until I got basically no run out, and messed with my taper attachment. It looks like it's about three inches per foot until I got a zero reading with my tenths indicator, or a couple tenths it was. It wasn't zero, but really close. We'll, we'll fit it in the end, so it's not that big a deal. So we got to cut a thread on here, and it's a fairly coarse thread. It's 11 threads per inch, fairly deep, and doing this between centers, the dog could possibly slip and cause issues. So I set my compound up to about 30 degrees. And from what I've read, uh, this alleviates some of the cutting pressure. You're not cutting on the, comp on the entire tool. You're only cutting on one side of it because you drive it in at the angle of the thread. So we're gonna be doing that. I'm gonna bring you in a little closer and show you how I got this dog set up on here. Um, I did it this way because I had to do it this way. I don't have any more dogs. Uh, that will actually fit this drive plate. So I'm going to bring you in a little closer. I'm going to explain things a little better and then we can get started. Well guys, here's the final product. That ran, that uh, machine in this ran really long, really quick, so I just showed you some of the highlights. Uh, most of it's nothing you haven't seen before, I'm sure. But uh, I'm really happy with the way this, this turned out. It's uh, relatively accurate and really looks good. The finish is good and I think it's going to work just fine. Let me show you how I plan to use it. Now, I'm not sure this is the final way I'll use it. Um, it fits really well. And nut screws on just like it would if you were threading the wheel onto the machine. And 
now this is just a small RC car balancer, but this is the idea. And that you just use gravity to balance the wheel. You know, the wheel will fall. The heaviest part of the wheel will, should fall to the bottom as long as you don't have much resistance on the rolling mechanisms in here. And that's in question in this setup or not. But it does seem to be working. And uh, this wheel has a heavy point on it that wants to rotate down to the bottom. So that shows me that this is working. Now how accurate it's working, I don't know. And only time will tell. But uh, I'm really happy about that. This has turned out really well. And I can't wait to get my little grinder set up and I can make this shaft even more accurate than it is now. Whether it needs it or not, I don't know. But, but that's the idea is we just let gravity balance our wheels and uh, that should be good enough. Wow, man, I've got, a, I've got a real mess in here. It gets that way quick, quick with me. Um, I'm like a tornado. And then I gotta come back behind myself and clean up. Probably like most folks. But uh, I had to get that out of my system with that grinder. Man, I had not run it up until this point and it was killing me, so I'm glad to I'm glad to see that it sounds pretty good. So that gives me some confidence anyway, and I needed it. The arbor that we just made, I'm pretty happy with that. I think that uh, you know it'll function you know relatively well. Um, it's not ideal, I'm sure, with that stand, but it's better than nothing. So that'll get us started, and uh, and then we'll have to refine it in, in the future. For those of you who are interested, I started a Patreon. Now, I didn't start it because I wanted to. I've actually put it off for quite some time. I did it because I have to. You know, making these videos takes a lot of time for me. And, uh, you know, making a project like that little spindle, which would take me a couple hours probably, you know, took me all day. And then to edit, you know, you're talking hours more. So. It's uh, eaten up a lot of the time that I would use to make money for my family on the side. So in order to continue making the videos and stuff, something's going to have to change, you know. So that was my potential fix for that problem. So if you'd like to join my Patreon and help support the cause, please do. I'll put a link in the description. Thanks for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. If you haven't, Make sure to subscribe to the channel by clicking on my little guy up here and hit the bell for notifications. And as always, I'll see you next time.